jumped this morning as Americans head to the polls today. The S&P 500 gained 2.3% in morning trading, heading for a second straight gain. The stock market has spent most of the year trying to recover from the economic fallout of the pandemic and now faces a potentially contentious election. Here's a live look at the big board right now. Up about two and a half percent. Let's bring in Melissa Armo. She's the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Uh, Melissa, it's great to see you on this election day. Um, so, walk us through what these numbers mean. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's an analyst at a big uh, Wall Street firm, and he suggested that uh, the market is predicting a calm election, not a contentious one, with a winner that makes a clean victory. What are you hearing? Are you there? I am, Melissa. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I lost you for a second. I, as far as the election mm -hmm. goes, I think the market is going to be very unhappy if we don't have an answer within the next 24 to 48 hours. And I think that we could see a lot of volatility if we don't. If we do find out who wins, let's say Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday morning, the latest, I definitely think you're going to see a, a big reaction from the market. Whether it's up or down depends on really who wins. Now, well, as far as the overall trend of the market, I think the overall trend of the market is going to remain bullish no matter who wins. The market for most of the life of the market is always in an uptrend. But I think the selling that we saw in the last few weeks, now today we're rallying, but the selling we saw particularly last week and the week before was a lot of people taking profits because they were being cautious, because people were up. Uh, the market has had a nice run up here since those March lows. And people are unsure if they want to hold through the election results. Because again, if we don't know, I think you're going to see extreme volatility going into the end of the week into Friday. So a number of analysts caution against making drastic bets on the stock market post-election. Um, do you agree with that advice? Well, I would, I would wait, to be honest with you, and I'm very, very cautious to go back in any new longs until the market gets close to the highs. I mean, that's very conservative, but to be honest with you, that's really what I'm looking at. So even if we were up to, like we're up today, even if we rally tomorrow, even if we get an answer tomorrow, I want to see more follow-through. We haven't had enough follow-through, in my opinion. Back in the first, second week of October was Columbus Day. We got really close to the highs in the S&P. We, we couldn't get over it. To me, I want to make sure we are breaking out. So that would mean really getting up and over the highs. Otherwise, we still might fall. And why am I saying that? And this is regardless who wins, because there's still the issue hanging out there of COVID. And many, many businesses are still uh, shut down. The Congress has not passed a stimulus bill. I'm thrilled that the numbers ha were a lot better last week. GDP was better than expected last week. The unemployment claims finally got under that 800,000 number last week. All of that is good. But I think the problems that you're seeing in Europe with the shutdowns could affect the U.S. And again, it doesn't matter who wins. We don't, we don't want to shut down again. The Labor hmm. Department, Melissa, is also releasing its job report for October on Friday. Uh, what do we expect to see from that? They're looking for a number. For, they're looking for a number that's under eight percent, which would be great. I think if we could get any kind of strong number, that you could see a, see a nice rally on Friday, if we have an answer who won the election. Because if we don't know who wins the election. By Friday, you're going to see volatility. It, doesn't, it almost doesn't even matter what the number is. I don't see people jumping back in long this market or any particular stocks if they're unsure who wins. And the reason I'm saying that is because what if there's legal problems? What if this goes on way past when anyone thinks? Some of the states are allowing uh, the counts, like Pennsylvania is in contention. I'm from Pennsylvania. That's one of the states that is allowing people to mail in ballots even today, and they're counting, I think, through November 10th. Well, that takes us well into next week. So I think that the, that the market really wants an answer on the unemployment numbers on Friday are going to be a wash, even if they're positive, if we don't know who's president. And I want to say one thing about Pennsylvania, because that has been in contention, and it's neck and neck with Trump and Biden in Pennsylvania. There's, there's a group of voters in Pennsylvania. There's an Amish and Mennonite community. They typically don't go out and vote. Some of them have never voted before in their life. They're going to vote this year. And, and I think that that is going to be something that people really haven't counted because some of them don't have electricity and they haven't been polled and they're new voters. So there's a huge group of people in Pennsylvania that no one knows how they're going to vote, on which side they're going to vote on, that no one's really talking about that could 
really either help Trump or hurt Trump, depending on which way they vote. That's a really interesting story that you're right. I mean, I, I know I don't think we've talked about that at all. Listen, Melissa, before um, we let you go, I know we've been talking about the impact of the election, but you did mention COVID and that we don't, you know, investors don't want to see a mass shutdown again. But we're looking sort of across the pond at what's happening in Europe, and we've kind of been watching Europe to see what could be happening with us. I'm wondering how much investors are looking at Europe and factoring that in when they're making their decisions. Well, that was part of the reason why you saw the big sell-off last week. We sold off last week once they announced that they were shutting down and in Germany and France, and there are certain specific areas over there in England as well. That would just be devastating to certain, uh, certain groups and certain sectors. One of them would be airlines. Boeing is, it is up today with the market, but that looks still really weak to me. The earnings were not good on Boeing last week. A lot of these airlines already announced, this was back two months ago, that they're going to have more layoffs by the end of the year if they don't get more stimulus money. So let's just say Trump wins. I think there's a chance that we could get a stimulus passed before the end of the year. Let's say Trump loses and Biden wins. It's, it's going to be like a lame duck session, and I don't know if Congress is going to pass a stimulus before the end of the year. Then you're going to see more layoffs with some of, certain of these sectors, and they will drag down the market because Boeing affects the Dow. Because remember, there's only 30 stocks in the Dow. Boeing is a big one in there. And that, if that sells off more, you're going to have the Dow drag off more. And again, it's all going to kind of go together. And don't forget one more thing. January 1st, that deadline is looming out there for people that have pushed back on the eviction. So in, like in New York, the evictions were pushed off, and all the people that are for the foreclosures till January 1. Now, maybe they'll announce they'll push it back even more, but let's say they don't. Well, there's going to be a lot of people out on the streets that don't have any stimulus money. They're kicked out of their homes. They're kicked out of their apartments. I mean, this is devastating to some people. And so that is less than two months away unless they want to push the date back again. Yeah, that's all, you know, important things to remember to uh, re for us to remember. And I know that, you know, for a lot of landlords, you see have their bills mounting. They've already sort of put in those requests for evictions and they're yeah. just kind of waiting for, um, you know, the, the courts to start start uh, firing up again. Um, Melissa Armo, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.